the West Indies performance against Papua New Guinea was way below par. I was described it as an embarrassing win. One must give Chase a great deal of credit because he kept his head, uh, he showed very good concentration, very good judgment. Um, he did find the boundary when the ball was there to be hit. We needed to have a little bit of pace. Either McCoy or Shamar Joseph should have been in that side. Um, I think Darren Sammy will have to concede one spinner and against um, the next opponent, and they will have to bring in a, a pace bowler. Good afternoon to all the cricket fans around the world. So, this afternoon, as we sit in with no other than Joseph Reds Pereira, a man who needs no introduction when it comes on to cricket. So, currently we know we are in the ICC World Cup T20, one of the biggest games that the world have ever seen. And with Reds Pereira here, we just want to get a quick look into the opener in terms of the West Indies playing Papua New Guinea. Reds Pereira, we just want to say welcome to BIP TV. Could you give us your take quickly as you come in? Well, thank you very much for inviting me in. Hello to your wide audience. Um, the West Indies performance against Papua New Guinea was way below par. I was described it as an embarrassing win. Because when you um, have a score of 137 to get, and you take 19 overs to make that score, it doesn't say a lot of your batting. Our batting lack patience, we lack the, the ability to accept that the pitch was not a fiery pitch, it was, it was slow, and we just didn't have the patience, we just didn't have the patience, and all our batsmen got out early four shots. So the question to you, um, Reds Pereira, is what would you have liked to have seen in this first opener, given the total that the opponent had made, and the team that we have? I would have expected the West Indies should have won that with eight wickets because what is very important is your net run rate. And we didn't do a good job with um, our net run rate. And you have to see when other uh, people in the group play Papua New Guinea, how they will how they will, will um, do against Papua New Guinea. Um, I, I, I thought that um, our batting very impatient. We didn't have the, the we, we certainly didn't have the patience and um, I think that they will have to do something about the batting. They'll have to make changes in the batting and changes in the bowling. So definitely when we look at the team that we have individually, um, the strike rate for some of these players is the highest coming into the game. and. Taking all of that over to make such a score, you know, looking in from the outside, I know many of our spectators also would be disappointed, not just you, with that performance. But going forward, I would expect that they would have to take a look at what they're doing now in terms of their first opener. The good thing about it, they won the game. But if you were the captain, how would you basically go into that dressing room speaking to your team? I will simply say we just didn't have uh, the mental makeup to apply yourself because of the very slow, the slow nature of the pitch. Um, it it needed it needed patience. It needed uh, an appreciation of the conditions. But you know when you look at how well King was going how well poor run was going. You just didn't need those very rash shots. You know, there, there was rash shots. Poor run didn't have to go um, so hard. I mean, a game isn't won by sixes and fours only. A game is won by mo mo rotating the strike, picking up twos, finding the boundaries without taking a, a lot of chances. And uh, we just found ways of playing, playing very rash shots. Um, you mean, 
King and Kuran were, were examples. I thought the power caught behind was an example. R R Rutherford misjudged the leg totally, got himself totally tied up. And instead of hitting it through the outside, he was trying to pull it uh, uh, through the onside. Um, I, one must give Chase a great deal of credit because he kept his head, uh, he showed very good concentration, very good judgment. Um, he did find the boundary when the ball was there to be hit. Excellent performance by Chase and uh, no, um, no surprise that he was the man of the match easily. I thought that um, we needed to have, have a little bit of pace. Either McCoy or Shamar Joseph should have been in that side. Um, I think Darren Sammy will have to concede one spinner and I, against um, the next opponent, and they, they will have to bring in a, a pace bowler. Uh, thank you for that analyst there. I uh, also want to look at our bowling. Did you believe that we basically did our best in terms of restricting Papa New Guinea to that score or we could actually have them score much less runs in terms of, of the bowling department? Well, it's a cricket game and a side might badly initially, but you would expect You'll expect a partnership um, along the way um, from Papa Gudigidi. And, and, and they had a decent partnership in the middle order. But 136 runs in T20 international cricket um, should not give, give, give a West Indies side all that trouble it did. And um, I think that our spinners did quite well. I'm not too sure. Um, Russell should be opening the, the innings. I don't believe Russell should be opening the innings. He started with Hussein. He was a little initially a little expensive. Moti came in, bowled well, chased bowled well, but I think we, we, we lacked some genuine pace in Shamar Joseph and McCoy. Thank you very much. And I just want to switch just a little bit to talk about the pace joseph um just going into the world cup we know he had a hype and the world is talking about him as a young pace bowler what do you think he brings in terms of the mix to this west indies team do you see him playing you know in the world cup consistently from here on or is he just gonna be there hanging around with this hype that's behind him no i thought i don't think that um some of the sides in this zone, Papa New Guinea, is accustomed to that genuine pace. I mean, Joseph is able to bowl at 150 clicks an hour. I mean, how many Papa New Guinea players are faced against that that, that, that pace? Uh, Joseph, in the matches against um, South Africa, bowled very quickly. Um, and I think I think that he, he we could be he could be a weapon as, as we go on, but we might have to leave out one of the spinners. Thank you there very much for that. So I know that you would have been getting a feedback from the spectators across the West Indies. I know your phone may, may be blowing up. But what do you get coming in from the spectators, the followers? What, what's the feeling like in terms of this performance from them? But the team has got to do better in just about every department that we played below par. Our feeling wasn't great. Our feeling wasn't great. And uh, we, we just have to lift, lift our level. Lift our level in, in just about every department of the, of the game. I mean, the one outstanding person will was Chase. I believe nobody else really measured up. Uh, the spinners didn't do too badly, but um, I think they, the worst area of the game for the West Indies was in fact the batting. I mean, you took the you took the the, the game down to the 19th over, score, trying to score 137. Very very disappointing. I think that uh, there was enough. 
discussions among the West Indies team not to underrate pa Papua New Guinea, not to think that the game is won before the first ball is bowled. And if they want, if they wanted a wake up call, they got a wake up, a wake -up call. That um, in a number of areas uh, they they will have to improve, and they might have to make changes in, in that side. We see is that they actually labored to get that little run, and that could have proved to me that you know they may not be as strong as we we think they are in terms of the mindset. We see the team; it looks good, but really and truly, the way they approach this game. game was definitely the best way they took quite a while to get that meager total i would say i know you know it's at work in progress for the west indies you know we have fallen from i'd say from grace where we used to be west indies was feared by every team across the world um how do you yeah. see that you know where we were back then versus where we are now the, the period on the lloyd and the Richards, I don't believe we'll ever see again in our lifetime. It's like the great Brazil team when um, that that era finished. Um, Brazil had to accept and that, that 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 was a, a very special period. Uh, no comparison. The the standard of, of West Indies first class cricket is, is at a very average level. We have the smallest first class season in the world. There's a focus on the white ball game, but um, where other countries can pay their players to stay home um, and be loyal uh, to their their nation, we just don't have the money uh, to keep our players at home. And until there's a fair sharing of the cake by the ITC, which is dominated by India, Australia and England, uh, the West Indies are always going to be in a position where they're not too sure whether their best players may be available, may be available. I think going forward in this in, in this um, tournament, in our next game, Hope should come in to open the innings of King, and one of the spinners will probably have to be sacrificed or a middle-order batsman uh, to play one of the genuine fast bowlers, either Joseph or, 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 or McCoy. Thank you very much. and. This we know is now um, history, this World Cup. So I'm just going to switch it from the West Indies. You know, we have gotten the takeaway, your views on what you thought happened in this first game. And also you have gotten insight in terms of how our followers and spectators would have felt about this particular opener for the West Indies. But we're going to turn it now to the USA. This is history for the USA, the first time in a T20 World Cup, especially being played on US soil. It's been shared between the US and and the West Indies. Uh, with that said, you could just me now in terms of the USA. Because this was a very exciting game. Could you just give us an analysis of the game of the USA in terms of the West Indies, how they responded to this um, total set by Canada? Well, first of all, it was a beautiful picture. Uh, and when you join the commentary, to see the, the stadium, to see the fairly large crowd, a lot of passion, and uh, you know, all of a sudden you're hearing uh, the national anthems of the USA and, and Canada, and Canada produced a very good, very good um, score that um, looked that it was going to test um, the American team, but the batting of, of, of Jones in particular who has strong Barbadian roots and played a lot of cricket um, in Barbados and is very friendly with most of the top Barbadians. I think himself and the South African, uh, they, they they won the game. They won the game for for America. I mean, after eight overs, Canada was doing extremely well. From the ninth over, they just couldn't produce the consistency. There were so many wides. There were no balls. Um, and they just seem to not have an answer how to contain the middle order batting of the USA. And the, the USA has started very well, started very well. But I think the batting of the USA is stronger than their bowling.
Thank you very much. I really want to say um, congratulations to the USA team. You know, this is them in their first T20 World Cup. And for me, they have made a statement. They make a statement to the world that US is now at the level that you gotta be careful in terms of how you look at them, the way you approach them when they get on that field. I know the US fans here, they are overjoyed with the, the, uh, the, the, the game, the results. I love the way Aaron Jones play. You know, he just took the game totally from um, Canada. Could you just tell me about Aaron Jones, the way he, he played, the way he looked? Oh, he looked very, very um, compact player. Um, his defense initially uh, was strong and uh, when he really got into the ball striking area he was hitting it so cleanly I mean the, 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 the number of, of sixes a couple cleared the ground totally I mean you know he just couldn't do anything wrong and I really hope from the American point of view he hasn't picked too early and he left some runs under his belt uh, to contribute later on. Um, just to go back to the bowling, I think Ali Khan, who's got a lot of West Indian experience, he plays, of course, in the West Indian franchise system for Trinidad. He has a, a Pakistan background. I think he he did not have the game what we expected. Uh, it was a little expensive in his opening overs, and that's one improvement turning to the bowling that they will have to improve on. But the batting, um, I, I would think, uh, looks very promising indeed. Uh, but of course, in the next game, all their batsmen in the US team, they take guard and they start at north. All right, and a quick look at um, Ghost. How did you look at his performance and his support? Very nice player. He's not a, as aggressive as Jones, he doesn't have to be. Because if Jones is going so well, uh, he just had to find the occasional boundaries. And, um, you know, it was a very good partnership. It was a, a partnership of, of, of a difference. A South African background, he brings a, a maybe a lot of good coaching as a, as a young player. And he's a major find. And I think that Corey Anderson, uh, we mustn't forget Corey Anderson, his experience as a New Zealand player. I mean, um, the, the American team has got a, a fair amount of depth and a fair amount of international players. How do you feel about uh, America's chances of getting out of this group that we see Pakistan and we see India, two of the world giants when it comes on to cricket? How do you see US making it out of this um, group? I don't see them going out in that group, but cricket is a funny game. India is a lot more of a consistent side. Pakistan could have some brilliant days, could have some bad days. And if they have a bad day against the USA, they can find themselves in trouble. So I think the, the focus will be by the USA coaching staff is to ensure that they can produce a very good performance. If they if they bat first, they have to put 200 plus on the board so that they can force the Pakistanis to take chances, to score at a fast rate. If you're taking a chance as a batsman, you're giving the bowler a chance. Uh, but I think the key to America going forward is to beat the Pakistan if they could. But Pakistan will have to have a bad day, or America will have to have a super day. <laughs>